Hello students, welcome back to our channel Puttik Online. So in this video, we will be going to discuss on few important MCQs of CUET PG Food Science and Technology on the topic Cereals and Pulses. So let us proceed. So before starting, let me tell you one thing that Foodtech Online has launched an ebook for all the CUET PG food science and technology aspirants. So this ebook will cover all the six sections. Those are introduction to food science and technology, basic baking technology, advanced baking technology, introduction to food safety and preservation, advanced fruit and vegetable preservation technology and food safety and hygiene and quality testing. So all these six sections are covered in a precise manner and which are important for your exam point of view. So the link is given for this ebook. It's given in the description box. You can get that in the description box. And yes, one more thing that Foodtech Online also has an app in the Play Store by the name Foodtech Online. You can get the link in the description box also. So over here, if you are practicing for any food related exams, say CUET PG or FCI, Food Analyst, Food Safety Officer or GATE 2025, and you want to practice more questions, then over here, different sections are there in the, those sections. By clicking those sections, you will get different subtopics and in that you will get the questions. So you can practice those questions and enhance your preparation. So Chalo, let us now start with question number one. Which of the following has highest fat content? Options are oat, maize, rice and bajra. So over here the correct option is A that is oat. So oat has the highest fat content among the following options. Question number two. Which of the following moisture content is considered safe for the storage? So options are 15%, 14%, 16% and 17%. So my correct option over here is option number B that is 14%. So the safe moisture content of grain uh, storage, it actually depends on the type of the grain and secondly on the duration of the storage. However, there is a general rule that we can say that it should be dried to a moisture content of 14 or less. Uh, so this helps to avoid the potential problems such as the molds or discolorations of in the grains or we can say the respiration losses or insect damages. So over here, my correct option is B that is 14 so question number three, combination of which of the following is known as gluten? So options are gliadin and glutelin, gliadin and lysine, glutelin and glutelin and lysine and gliadin. So over here my correct option is A that is gliadin and glutelin. So actually the gluten it is a structured protein which is usually found in the cereal grains and the term that gluten it actually refers to the combination of two proteins these are gliadin and glutelin. So over here my correct option is A that is gliadin and glutelin. So question number four. Fisher unit is actually used to measure flour color, damage starch, flour particle size and protein content. So over here my correct option is C that is flour particle size. So Fisher unit it is actually used to measure the flour particle size. So this method is actually based on the permeab air permeability and it is used to measure the flour particle size whereas flour color, damage starches and protein content these are used uh, by other uh, these are typically uh, measured using other different methods. So over here my correct option is C that is flower particle size. Question number five which of the following is not included in pulse milling? Over here the options are loosening of husk, parboiling, dehusking and splitting of pulses. So over here my correct option is B that is parboiling. So the step which is not included in the pulse milling is parboiling. So the major steps which are actually used in the pulse milling are the loosening of the husk, number one, number two, dehusking and number three, splitting of the pulses. Whereas parboiling, we can say that parboiling, it is a process which is commonly associated with the rice milling and not in, it is used in the pulse milling. So over here, my correct option is B, that is parboiling. Next question number six. What is pitting? So options are impart scratches and cracks on hard seed coat, removing pits, removal of fine particles by gelating agents and removal of large particles by air bubbles. So over here my correct option is A that is pitting actually it is a method which is used to impart cracks, uh, scratches, cracks or we can say dent on its hard seed coats. Actually this is done for the easy migration where oil and water can take place between the husk and the 
cotyledons. So my correct option is A, that it imparts scratches, cracks or the dents on its hard seed coat. Next question number seven, which are the important steps that are involved in deciding the total recovery of pulses? So options are loosening of husks, parboiling, dehusking and splitting of the pulses. So over here, my correct option is A, that is loosening of the husks. So loosening of the husk, actually it is an important step we can say in the pulse milling as it decides the total recovery and quality of the mill dal. So loosening of the husk, it is actually achieved by the two different methods that are wet method and the dry method. So over here my correct option is A that is loosening of the husk. Next question number 8. So which of the component is reduced when the pulses are soaked? So options are phytic acid, nitric acid, potassium oxide and nitrous oxide. So over here my correct option is A that is phytic acid. So we can say when the pulses they are soaked so the component that is reduced is the phytic acid. So this process actually it helps to reduce the oligosaccharides of the raffinose family and also side by side it reduces the phytic acids uh, which are present in the pulses. So over here my correct option is A that is phytic acid. Question number 9. Uh, proteins of cereals and pulses are options are complete protein, incomplete protein, partial complete protein and none of these. So options are B that is incomplete protein. So the proteins of cereals and pulses they are considered to be as an incomplete protein. This is because the individually when they are taken that is cereals and pulses neither of them they contain all the essential amino acids that our body needs. However when they are combined say when the cereals these are combined with the pulses they provide a complete uh, diet or the complete protein to our body. That is why they are taken in the combinations. So over here my correct option will be that this incomplete protein. So question number 10. So dash starch is used in making instant jellies and puddings. So options are high amylose, high sucrose, high amylopectins and high cellulose. So over here my correct option is C that is high amylopectins. Actually this is because uh, the so we can say that the amylopectin it is a type of a polysaccharide which is present in the starch. So, so this has a uh, ability to gelatinize and form a thick and stable structure when it is mixed with the water and heated. So this property it makes it ideal use in the products like this uh, puddings and jellies. So since it requires a certain level of stability and strength and thickness. So that is why high amylopectins of starches are used in making instant puddings and jellies. So option number C is correct. So question number 11. Uh, the type of crop which is able to fix the nitrogen from air is options are rubber, coffee, legumes and wheat. So over here my correct option is number C that is legumes. So the type of crop which is able to fix the nitrogen from air is the legumes plants such as the peas or the uh, beans. So the bacteria which help in this uh, is the rhizobium and this process is known as the nitrogen fixation. So option number C is correct over here. So question number 12. Uh, which nutrient is considered essential for growing crops? So options are sodium, iodine, cobalt and chromium. So correct option is C that is cobalt. So the correct option is cobalt. So cobalt it is essential for growing crops as it is the key component for the nitrogen fixation in the process in the leguminous plants. So it is actually required for the proper functioning of the rhizobium bacteria that helps in this nitrogen fixation process. So over here correct option is C that is cobalt. So question number 13. Uh, in dry milling the percentage of pulse dehusked in one pass or single operation is 40%, 50%, 60% and 70%. So over here correct option is B that is 50%. So in dry milling about 50% of pulses are dehusked in one pass or the single operation. So question number 14 percentage of protein in pulse by weight is 10 to 15%, 15 to 20%, 17 to 26% or 20 to 28%. So over here correct option is C that is 17 to 25%. So pulses we can say such as the chickpeas we or the green grams, peas, horse grams or beans, lentils, black grams or etc. or so on. So in, this is actually these are actually rich sources of proteins and the protein content it actually 
actually ranges from 190 to 260 grams. So approximately we can say the, that 19 to 26 percent uh, by weight. So more appropriate answer over here is option number C that is 17 to 25 percent. So question number 15. Uh, barley is lower in energy than crop because it has higher dash content. Options are vitamin, carbohydrate, fibers and none. So over here most appropriate one is C that is fiber. So barley actually it is uh, barley is lower in the energy than corn because it has higher fiber content. That is option number C is correct. Question number 16. The aluron layer is rich in options are starch, pectin, protein and hemicellulose. So over here correct option is C that is protein. So this aluron layer actually it is the outermost layer of the endosperm in the cereal grains and it is rich in the protein content. Uh, in the cereals with the starchy endosperm the aluron contains it is around 30% of the kernels protein and this cell of the aluron layer I, these are filled with the protein uh, endosperms uh, proteinaceous aluron grain and which plays an important role during the time of germination. So over here the correct option is C that is protein. Question number 17. Starch grains are larger in dash of endosperms. So options are peripheral, central, older or both BC. So option uh, over here correct option is B that is central. The starch granules these are larger in central of the endosperms. So correct option is B. Next 18. Starch synthesis starts first in dash endosperm. So over here correct option is central, younger, peripheral or both B and C. So the starch synthesis it first starts in the C that is peripheral region of the endosperm. Question number 19. Out of the total starch content in C 95% of amylopectin is present in. Options are rice, uh, B. Wrinkled mutant of P. Waxy mutant of maize and smooth seeds of P. So over here my correct option is C that is waxy mutant of P. So the out of total starch content in seed 95% of amylopectin is present in the waxy mutant of the maize. Option number C is correct. Question number 20. Which of the following enzyme is not involved in starch synthesis? Options are AGPase, starch synthase, cellulose and isomalase. So over here correct option is C that is cellulose which is not involved in starch synthesis. So over here correct option is C that is cellulose. So, this AGPase starts, AGPase actually it is adenosine diphosphoglucose pyrophospholase enzyme. Uh, start synthesis and isomalase enzyme these three enzymes it plays a crucial role in the process of starch biosynthesis whereas the cellulose it uh, that breaks down into uh, so cellulose it is actually the polysaccharide which is present in the plant cell walls and it breaks down into the glucose unit and it is not involved in the synthesis of the starch so over here correct option is C that is cellulose so next question number 21, isomalase cut the dash linkages in the starch. So alpha 1,4, beta 1,4, alpha 1,6 or alpha 1,3. So over here correct option is C that is alpha 1,6. So isomalase it is a starch in the debranching enzyme uh, which cuts at, at alpha 1,6 uh, linkage in the starch and this enzyme it plays a crucial role during the breakdown of the alpha polyglucans uh, such as the amylopectins. So correct option is C that it is alpha 1 6. Next question number 22. High dash starches don't crystallize on freezing. Options are amylose, sucrose, amylopectins and cellulose. So over here my correct option is option number A that is amylose. So this amylose it is a component of starch along with the amylopectin. So unlike amylopectin this amylose it forms a colloidal dispersion in hot uh, water. So this property it makes the high amylose uh, less digestible and it prevents them from uh, crystallizing upon the uh, freezing. So over here correct option is A that is amylose. Question number 23. The hemicellulose containing dash linkage in starchy endosperm is beta 1,3, beta 1,6, beta 1,4 and both A and C. So over here correct option is D that is both A and C. That is beta 1,3 and beta 1,4. 
So this hemicellulose actually it is a starchy endosperm which primarily it consists of aribose islands and beta glycans. So this beta glycans actually it is composed of the glucose units. Those are beta 1, 3 and beta 1, 4 glycosidic, uh, glycosidic bonds. So over here the correct option is D that is A and C. Question number 24, end product of the conversion of sucrose in polymeric carbohydrate is options are galactose, glucose, mannose and all of these. So over here my correct option is B that is glucose. So the end product of conversion of the sucrose in polymeric carbohydrate is the glucose. So we know sucrose it is a disaccharide and it is made up of glucose and fructose. So when it undergoes the hydrolytic conversion what happens it breaks down into the monosaccharide its monosaccharides and these monosaccharides particularly the glucose unit it can be used for various metabolic pathway whereas this galactose and mannose these are not directly the product of glucose conversions over here the correct option is B that is glucose next question number 25 what affects the milling potential of rice options are contact time and quality uh, efficiency and quantity uh, rice, milled rice recovery and quality and quantity and milled rice recovery. So for this question do comment down the correct option in the comment box. And with this we have completed few important MCQs related with cereals and pulses of food science and technology. And if you like our channel you can share with your friends and also you can subscribe our channel for more such videos. So till then thank you and enjoy learning.